Hello, in this video I want to demonstrate how you can work together with Capture One and Affinity Photo 2. So let's get started. I'm here in Capture One right now and I want to develop this image. So I switch here over and will brighten up the shadows a little bit, bring down the highlights and change the exposure. And that's everything for now here inside Capture One. So here I have the developed image and this is a raw image as you can see over there. And if I want to go to the retouching phase, I can go with a right click or secondary click here and just say open with. And if I open this image with Photoshop or Affinity Photo 2, then the raw image gets opened. And the developing I did here in Capture One isn't reflected with this. So if you want to have the developed image inside Affinity Photo or inside Photoshop, you have to go here and say edit with. And in this case, I want to edit this image inside Affinity Photo 2. So now you get this dialog over here and in this dialog you can change the settings because you will switch out of Capture One, which is a raw editing suite, inside a pixel world. And here inside the pixel world you want to define the format of the file. So use TIFF if you go to Affinity Photo. You can use 16 or 8 bit. I will stay at 16 bit. And for the options for the TIFF format you can say uncompressed or with a zip compression. And I will definitely recommend the zip compression. So just choose zip over here. And for the ECC profile go with Adobe RGB if you have a screen that can represent these colors or just go with sRGB if you have a standard monitor or a standard display to uh, see all the colors. So if this is set it up correctly like it is right now here in my case, you can say edit variations and Capture One will create the TIFF file. You will see it short time on the right or afterwards and sends this TIFF file over to Affinity Photo 2. And now I can start working with the retouch here inside Affinity Photo. And I will do it on a very basic level. So I will create first of all a new layer, a new pixel layer. And then I will change to the Healing Brush tool. The shortcut is the J key. And if you're working on a new layer, it's really, really crucial that you change the current layer option over here to current and below because you want to work on a new empty layer and sample from the layers below. Additionally, you can change a line and then you can work and retouch uh, on the image. If you're working with a graphic tablet as I do here, you can go to the brush options like so. And here you can say that the size should be controlled under the dynamics pen with the pressure of the pen. So that's okay. Then I will zoom in. You can zoom with the pinch or with command and space bar and right to zoom in and left to zoom out like so. And now I can press the option key to sample an area and start retouching. Then you can change the brush size with control option and go to the left. And now I can start retouching and cleaning the image like this. Here I want to retouch the hair away like so. Go in, make it a little bit bigger and here I go just for the, the bigger blemishes like so. Okay, then there is a hair. So I will retouch this as well and go in and just do the retouching like so. Okay, this is okay for now because that's just a, a demo image. I don't want to go um, too much with it. A small thing I will do is to add a curves adjustment like so. Brighten everything like crazy in the beginning. And then on the keyboard you can use the shortcut command I to invert the mask and then go to the brush tool, shortcut is B, and change to the foreground color of white. And here as well if you're working with a graphic tablet go to the more tab and inside the more tab you can here edit the general settings for the brush. But you can go over to dynamics and in the dynamics tab you can go to accumulation jitter 100% with the pressure. So also with the pressure I can choose how much color I want to apply here. And in this case how much color on the mask. 
Okay, and now I can go in and paint over the iris like so. And here as well, to just lighten up the iris. And because it's on a layer mask, you can now go in and brighten the regions even more or bring it down and do a little bit of a contrast curve over here, like so. And if I have painted too much, I can switch the foreground and the background color. The shortcut for this is the X key and just paint it away where I don't want to have it. Toggle on the visibility, on and off, and now you see that you have done the correction. Okay, this is quite okay for right now. And now I want to bring this image back to capture one. And the easiest way is just to press Command S to save this image and then you get this dialog. And in this dialog it's crucial that you don't choose save as because then you save as an affinity photo file. You want to save with layers. And if you press save with layers then you see the export item dialog pops up and that means that you export this image back to the TIFF file and when I now switch over to capture one you see this is the raw file and over there it's the TIFF file with all the retouching done inside Affinity Photo and you get it back here to Capture One. So I switch over to Affinity Photo and close this image because it was saved. It's no problem and I don't get an dialog. And maybe I now want to change something here inside the TIFF file. And now it's crucial that you don't go over and say edit with Affinity Photo. Now you want to open with Affinity Photo because all the settings and all the things you have done here inside Capture One. For example, if I go in and change this image to black and white, these black and white adjustments are just here inside the Capture One catalog. And if I now want to open this black and white image, or not this black and white image, the image that's underneath the black and white image, the TIFF image, then you can go in and say open with Affinity Photo. And that means that you now open the TIFF file inside your editor, inside your pixel editor. All the settings you have done here inside Capture One, in the Capture One catalog, all these settings stay inside the Capture One catalog and you just will edit the TIFF file with all the corrections over here. So if I want to let's say hide the adjustments for the eyes, I can just go here in. Or if I want to do some more retouching, I can choose my retouching tool over here and just go in and do a little bit more retouching like so. Yeah, let's say that's okay. Oh, here's a, a bug it seems. It doesn't stick with the, um, with the settings from before, but now it's okay. I've retouched a little bit more over here. And now I save this, Command S, the TIFF file gets exported again. Now I can close this image go over to Capture One and here you see the, um, the things you have done, the adjustments here in Capture One will stay and the retouching is underneath the adjustments from the Capture One catalog. So the XMP settings will stay on top of the TIFF and here you have all your settings done inside Capture One. So as you see, the workflow from Capture One to Affinity Photo 2 is quite intuitive. Just remember you have to go out with a TIFF file and export it back to the TIFF file. So save with layers, that's the crucial point. And so you have the perfect raw image done inside Capture One. And if you want to retouch, you go out to the pixel editor to Affinity Photo 2 and there you can work inside Affinity Photo retouch, change everything, do compose things, whatever you want. And if you come back to Capture One, you have everything saved inside the TIFF file. So that's everything for now. If you like this video, give me a like and we will see us soon.